first of all welcome to this workshop so as you know this is a online workshop and today we are going to cover basic photography and i will be the presenter for this workshop my name is sumit dhupar and just for introduction uh, as you know i am doing professional photography since 2017 i have over 3000 uh, creations already available in my social media gallery you can check my Uh, social media profile with page handle smith photo world so it's available on the instagram and facebook you must have visited my website and uh, i'm offering my different services from my website and it's a uh, you can say it's a different ventures i've i've set up to control the different services i'm offering so spw expedition is just one of the part of that where i'm offering different photography courses and just for personal interest I like to do expressive portrait work. When possible, I am going into the street. I found my portrait models and tried to take uh, capture some expressions. I like to do creative art, creative artwork uh, for still life. Uh, it could be, um, it could be product or food. I like to do nature photography. When I'm when it uh, comes to micro work, I like to do it uh, uh, more and more because it helps me to gain concentration. and uh, just to enhance my skills uh, i usually do minimal artwork uh, because minimal artwork is help you to uh, improve your taste of composition because you will have minimal subjects elements in your frame and it will really help you how you can place your uh, subject into the frame uh, with the minimal approach um, and sometimes uh, you will feel that uh, you are getting good taste of composition and spw photograd uh, is my uh, one of the venture where i'm offering different sur- photography services uh, like pre wedding portfolio outdoor indoor studio studio work i am doing maternity shoot if available uh, for assignment i'm oh, i'm already prepared for that part also uh, like baby shoots concert party events product and food photography you must have visited my profile uh, you have seen all those works and for this uh, venture i have my dedicated uh, social media platform uh, where the profile page handle is sumit uh, spw photograph so like this i have spw fine art where i am uh, open to sell my uh, creative artwork we can say uh, it can be abstract artwork nature creative or minimal artwork i have my complete gallery available so if someone looking to have put uh, some posters or canvas kind of work and they can they can contact me i can help them to get get the quotation and the best price so spw fine art is my profile handle for spw fine art and spw expedition as you know i am doing all the photography uh, workshops uh, courses it can be photo work free photo work i am doing uh, in the weekend so when uh, uh, it uh, the covid situation was not there i was doing it very regularly but uh, i'm starting it again from 5th march my first uh, pre photo work is there in the in pune city uh you are from uh, which city uh basically from ahmednagar but uh, staying in pune now okay so if you want you can meet me you can join this pre photo work uh, on 5th march yeah i'm planning yeah thank you So I'm doing advanced photography workshops. In advanced photography, I used to uh, offer uh, light painting photography, uh, food photography, product photography. I consider all these as advanced photography workshop because we need more planning, more controlled environment, and we need to have better understanding for that uh, generous. I am also planning for photography tours. You must have seen. I have planned for Big One and Bharatpur. Big One is this month only, and Bharatpur will be the next month. the remote locations of photography tours i'm planning maybe i'll have more locations maybe different type of photography like tiger reserves and all uh, i'm looking for different ideas from uh, the feedback but i'm getting from the members i'm just planning on that part and the benefit of doing all this uh, when we go for a photo work or outdoor workshop it will help us to gain our levels and we'll meet photographers at all the levels and we'll co- collaborate with them we'll share their uh, we'll have their experience we'll share over experience and it's a very good environment for photographer if you are looking to learn learn more and more in the skills and we'll always look for to create the professional like frames 
so it's just not the fun part we'll take it some serious uh, serious uh, point also just uh, when we are having camera with us we should have some serious approach i should believe i believe in that part because if you even if if it's uh, your hobby if you will have some serious touch in it you will see that uh, your hobby is getting increased and it's taking different passion so it really helpful so if you uh, someone is want they have uh, want to have free photo work kind of uh, in their own city in different part of the in different part of india any any states so they can help me to get sponsor and i may have my free photo work there also because i am collaborating with skylar it's a data recovery software company uh, from mumbai so they are helping me to doing all that uh, arrangement sure my social media page handle for uh, spw expedition is uh, spw expedition and it's available on the instagram and facebook spw online uh, mm-hmm. as you as you know it's a part of spw expedition only but uh, here i'm just offering only online courses uh, so i try to cover all the topics what i'm offering in the outdoor so in the spw online i feel it's uh, giving more insight of the genres so what we feel is not possible to cover in the outdoor it's really possible to cover in the online uh, workshop where i can go in more detail and depth for the topic so it's really helpful someone who has joined me in the detailed workshop they must have seen that uh, what kind of content i'm creating for that online so it's really helpful it's a different uh, perspective when you see in the online workshop and how you get how you get to know that how detailed we can go into that uh, photography level it's really interesting so i like to keep continue i don't mind if even even if i have one registration for that so all our online workshop designed to deliver in depth knowledge as i said so selected subject sometimes difficult and even not for practical to share in our domain so it's really difficult sometimes to do all the discussion in the practical so this helps so i'm using the same spw expedition page handle for instagram and facebook just to posting all the updates regarding spw online workshop uh, i'm just recently developing my youtube channel sumit photo world so if you have seen that you i'll i like you to just go to this channel and try to see what kind of content i'm posting there my motive is just to have most of the learning uh, material available on the youtube channel and i'm trying to do it in a unique way where i'll be covering my different uh, project assignments uh, behind the scenes uh, for the spw photogram i'm doing so all the product photography food photography and other genres i'm i will do i'll try to have complete information that how i'm creating all those images and for post processing and other uh, different uh, tutorials kind of i have my different playlist spw launch so maybe you'll see the product demos and software reviews going forward and i have my one of the playlist is the uh, spw expedition where i'm posting all the this free photo work and uh, this uh, free work basic photography workshop video because every time we have different participants and we'll have different uh, topics sometimes for discussion so i feel all are uh, unique for experience for me every time when i have this kind of workshop and even i'm planning to do my video coverage for outdoor workshop maybe we'll have something uh, to show you in the going forward so if you subscribe this channel you will it will be good for you because you will have notification for all the uh, video updates i'm going to post on this yeah, i think two to three video i saw on youtube yes if you can subscribe the channel then you will get notification yeah, yeah sure sure i will send it So this is our schedule for today's workshop. We'll have two sessions. Session one will be ninety minutes. Session uh, two will be eighty minutes. We'll have ten minutes of break in between. But uh, I've just given the uh, time limit just to make myself uh, aware that we have to clear, we have to complete this uh, within the time what we have for this uh, workshop. Uh, if it stretch, it may stretch for ten fifteen minutes. Otherwise, I'll try to finish within the time period. and we have some extra time for q and a session so i'll keep that uh, one dedicated session where we will we'll be having discussion so what i'm asking you to just keep note down what the query you have uh, questions you arise in between while we are uh, 
in the uh, workshop during the time so instead of uh, stretching it too long for discussion in between we will keep the discussion uh, we can say till the for the q and a session so we'll have detailed discussion i can explain you the, uh, your uh, questions answers in detail so if if you feel you you need to ask any questions so any small bites uh, you can just unmute yourself you can ask me no problem with that video camera sharing is not allowed just for better experience and you can send me questions via chat also so when when you feel that uh, you are about to ask any question you can type in in the chat so this is our first topic how dslr camera works so how how long you have dslr camera with you uh, from 2 months from 2 months okay so have you have you tried to study it about uh, the technicalities that how it functions uh, any mechanics yeah, little bit little bit little not bit. in detail okay we'll try to get into it today yeah. so in the diagram you can see uh, the line is is just a notification how the light is traveling so when light enters the lens how it passes through the lens and uh, there is a reflex mirror which helps the light uh horizontal light to become vertical and reach the penta prism it's a section where vertical light become horizontal again and travel through the viewfinder where we are able to see the uh, image or see, see the uh, frame in front of camera through the viewfinder that's how we see the things and uh, when uh, the moment of shooting when we click the shutter release button uh, capture the image the sh reflex mirror goes right on top and let the light reach the sensor this is the strip red strip line you can see here it's a sensor where image will be captured so that's how the capturing process completes in the dslr camera so there are different components you can see so lens is there reflex mirror is there as i said this is a reflex mirror where which always stays there at the 45 degree angle inside the camera and when we click the shutter release button it will go up and let the light reach the sensor matte focusing screen so this is the matte focusing screen right on top and penta prism this is a section could be called penta prism so this helps the light uh, making vertical light horizontal and let that light uh, pass through the viewfinder we have eyepiece this viewfinder will call it as eye eyepiece we have focal plane shutter so this is the focal plane shutter which is just a kind of blocking the light uh, reaching the sensor or uh, not letting uh, any dust to reach the sensor so it's just a kind of protection protection for the sensor and when we press the shutter release button it will go up and on the same we have the sensor so whatever written here it's the same what i what i told you so this this is there is nothing different but if you want to read it thoroughly you can read it so whenever you want you can watch watch through the video recording and just hold it down how mirrorless camera works so nowadays we are talking about mirror mirrorless camera and how it is different from the dslr so many people said that mirrorless camera is really good it, it is very good for image quality and all all in all we'll try to study what are the pros and cons and uh, for the mirrorless camera and how it is really good uh, when we compare to dslr the mirrorless system is more simple than the dslr because we have less components you can see only lens is there only shutter is there the focal panel only sensor is there and the last we have electronic viewfinder this is new component in mirrorless camera so this is the actually main difference or we can say the improvement when we talk about mirrorless camera we'll uh, know more in details uh, in coming slides for this so this generates electronic viewfinder generates a live preview of the scene directly to the electronic viewfinder so it's a kind of live view it's not a reflected view it's a it's a live view and it's uh, whatever you see in the mirrorless camera 
on the live on the through the viewfinder it will capture the same quality of image like the same color contrast you will see in the final image that's the benefit of it when the shutter release button is pressed the door will then slide up exposing the sensor to light after that another door slides down to cover the sensor again which stops exposure and complete the capture so this is the function of focal panel or the shutter just to complete the exposure so when we uh, press the shutter release button focal panel shutter opens up let the light reach the sensor when it's uh, when we complete the shot it close it again and then the image will be captured and it will be processed by the camera for your viewing in the, the format of raw file or jpeg files good so whatever the format you have selected for saving your images benefits of mirrorless camera we'll talk about the benefits now it's more compact so as we see having very less components so it will be very compact device and making mirrorless camera is easier to carry <laughs> it's really very easy to carry when we compare to dslr camera it's a kind of digital camera uh, in, in, when we uh, talk about uh, the weight only electronic viewfinder evf final image preview appears directly onto the image sensor offering live view which then displays on the lcd screen the image preview uh, allows you to adjust the settings like exposure brightness saturation contrast before taking your shot so as i said whatever you see through the viewfinder it, it is uh, just directly going to give you the same quality of results even you can adjust all those settings while uh, before even capturing the shot so that's the we can say the ability you have with the mirrorless camera image stabilization because the device is very lightweight it's very easy to handheld and uh, compared to dslr you can handle it for longer time that's the benefit of it and when we are able to handle any device uh, it means we have more opportunity to get sharp images silent mechanism fewer fewer moving parts inside the camera system also means less noise so when we have less components in the device it definitely it is going to be less noisy and when this less noisy will feel more comfortable with the device higher shooting speed with better focusing capabilities for contrast detection and high shutter speeds contrast detection will discuss in detail in coming slides that what is contrast contrast detection and how it is different when we compare to dslr camera and high shutter speeds mirrorless uh, models makes it easier for photographers to capture at a faster rate so uh, this is the one of uh, benefit of mirrorless camera burst mode is really improved when we compare to dslr so in dslr if we say uh, 10 out of 6 will be the sharp images in the burst mode in mirrorless camera it will be 8 uh, or more so it's a, this that's kind of the quality of burst mode you will get in the mirrorless device what's the difference so we'll now talk about the uh, we can say the pointers or the difference in both devices mirrorless cameras are more lightweight so this is the one point which is in the favor of mirrorless camera mirrorless camera offers real time previews of exposure and contrast so this is again a benefit of mirrorless camera mirrorless cameras have shorter battery life due to evf so this is a really interesting point because if we think uh, everything is good about but evf is really uh, taking load on the battery so if you are going to have mirrorless camera with you it means you need to have at least one backup of battery also because uh, it is really draining the battery very quickly if you are in a continuous shot uh, it is compared to dslr it is really going to have a battery drain quick to uh, quite uh, quickly compared to dslr mirrorless cameras are costly and a budget dslr will offer and the entry level photograph more value than a budget mirrorless camera so this is an interesting point uh, again in the favor of dslr that if you are going to buy a dslr first time uh i should say instead of going for a mirrorless camera you should go for the uh, budget dslr because uh, budget dslr will give you more accessories more features 
everything almost everything will have in that budget dslr which you sometimes miss in a budget uh, mirrorless camera so that's the quality you'll you'll see that uh, all the features you will miss if you go for the budget mirrorless camera so that will be the benefit of mirrorless cameras offers fewer accessories so because it's a this device is very new in the market so we'll see the uh, third party accessories are comparing to dslrs are very few so very uh, few options available in the market they are still lacking in their selection of attachments and lens mounts so uh, so all these accessories uh, compared to dslrs are very less uh, for the mirrorless camera mirrorless cameras shoot faster particularly when it comes to continuous shooting or burst mode images so as i said for burst mode it's really improved a uh, mirrorless camera because uh, the components are less and it helps to have direct uh, capture on the device and direct uh, preview live preview so this this all these things helps for the burst mode mirrorless camera offers more image stabilization so we have already understood that because the device is very uh, lightweight it helps uh, to increase the image stabilization lack of mirror mechanism means mirrorless cameras offers more stabilization and less shaky photos so there is no reflection kind of technique or penta prism something like the component there in the mirrorless camera so all this helps mirrorless cameras have smaller sensor size than dslr so this makes them less ideal for low light situation so whenever you are in low light situation so the bigger the sensor size uh, you you will have that will you will be having the more advantage with that the bigger the sensor size the more advantage you have for the low light situations so that's the benefit of dslr because they have larger sensor compared to mirrorless camera mirrorless cameras have less accurate autofocus system so this is really interesting point because uh, we are talking everything is uh, very amazing about the mirrorless camera but uh, out of focusing system is still uh, more we can say the accurate uh, in the dslr when we compare to their technique what they use for focusing in mirrorless camera they have contrast detection uh, but in uh, dslr they have phase detection phase detection it's very good when uh, to measure the distance between the camera and the subjects and all this matters for accurate focusing so this is the advantage i am believe this is what which is still leading the dslr camera and giving good competition to mirrorless uh, cameras in the market mirrorless camera cannot measure the distance between the lens and the subject as accurately as the dslr can so dslr is more accurate compared to ds uh, mirrorless camera when we talk about uh, focusing mechanism or focusing uh detection uh, focus detection technique or contrast detection so it's leading so it's still leading the market now we'll talk about camera modes so which modes uh, usually you uh, have in your camera when you are taking photos uh a and um, i i use three modes p s and a p s and a okay so we'll just just have bit in details uh, that it may help you to understand it more better that how, why these modes are there and when and where we should use it so shooting modes fall into three categories auto scene and psa and m mode so all these modes we call it as a shooting modes in auto and scene modes the camera controls shutter speed and aperture so in auto and scene modes it's a camera which is taking control of all the com all the all these uh, elements uh, to give you better exposure p s a and m modes are uh, also known as exposure modes we'll call these modes as exposure modes because uh, they are kind of uh, semi modes we can say the advanced modes uh, which allow you to control the uh, one of the component Uh, in manual modes we can control both but in uh, p s and a mode we can have control of one of one of the elements uh, and other respective elements will be controlled by the camera to give you better exposure so that's why you will you always have good exposure when you are in the 
P, S, and A modes. M is the manual. We'll have a more detailed discussion on that mode, and it'll give you give photographers a choice as to which elements of exposure, aperture, or shutter speed they wish to control. So, as I said, you have some control, and uh, you can control. You you have control to manage that part and other manage that element, and other will be controlled by the camera to give you better exposure. I have a screenshot from uh, the Canon device in the Nikon. In Canon, we have the button, dial button like that, M, A, S, P. So these are the shooting mo modes, manual, aperture, shutter speed, shutter priority, and program mode. In uh, Canon also, we have similar mode, but in uh, Canon, we have AV for aperture and TV for shutter priority. M is same, manual mode. And on the screen in the Nikon device, we have uh, information like that. We can see that we are in which mode, what is the shutter speed we are uh, using, and what is the aperture value. We have light meter also in the manual mode. We'll go in more details for the light light meter, how we can use it. So now we'll have the bit details of each mode. Mode P, programmed mode. So this mode is uh, give you more ability to, uh, we can say the create a record shots. So whenever, whenever I have my outdoor workshop, I always advise members to take one shot uh, with the P mode and see what are the settings they are getting for the camera, for the exposure. What shutter speed and aperture combination they are getting for good, uh, uh, or we can say the ideal frame with what they are looking for. The camera automatically adjusts aperture and shutter speed for optimal exposure. Photographer can choose from different combination of aperture and shutter speeds that will produce the same exposure. So this is known as flexible program mode. So if you change one element, other will be automatically adjusted to give you better result. So that's how you'll get idea that what kind of uh, camera settings you should have when you are in the uh, shutter mode, shutter priority mode or aperture priority mode. Uh, means while uh, using P mode, uh, we can change the shutter speed or uh, a and aperture. Uh, we can change the value. Yes, we, you can change, but other element will be changed by the uh, according. Uh, so it's a combination of both shutter priority and aperture priority. I thought camera automatically uh, will select uh, this value and we should not interfere with the uh, camera. No, that's a that's the function of auto. Yeah, yeah, I'm asking in P mode only. Uh, in P mode, we have a control to change these value, but uh, there'll be combination. Like if you are going to change the shutter speed, aperture mm -hmm. will be automatically adjusted by the camera to give you better exposure. Mm -hmm. okay. So this is the kind of uh, uh, flexibility you have. That's why we call this mode as a flexible mode because we can use this mode any any time for any for photography because uh, we are our main aim is to get good exposure. Yeah. Mode S uh, TV mode shutter priority. Shutter priority mode is basically used when you, we are going to capture some action. So our priority is to have good shutter speed. So camera will give you shutter speed what you need, but aperture will be controlled by the camera and camera will decide that this aperture will give you better exposure. So it depends on light condition. You may see it's opening the aperture very wide. So you need to be very careful about when you are in the semi modes like shutter priority. We'll discuss in detail that uh, how we can control the uh, aperture even when we are when we are in the shutter priority. Mode A AV is aperture priority. Photographer again have a ability to select the aperture, but shutter speed will be controlled by the camera. So it's a camera which is deciding that. Uh, shutter speed uh, you will get on that part on that selected aperture so again we still have some opportunity to control the shutter speed uh, and we'll understand why how and where how we can control it even in those semi modes 
mode m is manual so this is the mode where we want uh, to uh, reach actually so whenever we have a dslr camera our aim is to reach the manual mode and coming out of auto mode is always a dream for any photographer that when they are completely comfortable with the manual modes so manual modes is giving you ability to control all the elements uh, both aperture and shutter speed providing the greatest latitude for creative expression so it's a you that deciding that how the light should be looking in a final frame that it can be underexposed it can be overexposed with purpose for high key and low key shots all these uh, creative frames you can create uh, when you are in the manual mode Choosing wrong combination could, however, result in photographers that are overexposed or underexposed. So this is the term we use for underexposed and overexposed. So if you are choosing wrong combination, so when we say wrong combination, it means you want a balanced exposure, but for some reason the combination is not correct and you got some images overexposed or underexposed. But if we do the same thing with purpose for creative reasons, so. they will be we'll call it call it as a art so that's the uh, point of view of photographer how they are looking on those images and what is their desired result we therefore recommend using the camera exposure indicator as your guide when choosing aperture and shutter priority shutter speed so in the manual mode only light meter will be will be uh, showing to you so only man light meter only appear when you are in manual mode and when you change all these elements light meter will start behaving differently you will see it's going either on the negative side or or going into the positive sides for images which going to be overexposed so light is getting darker or brighter so you need to take care of the light meter in all these modes p s and a modes semi modes Uh, exposure is automatically adjusted for optimal results so in all these semi modes uh, our exposure will be all most of the time you will see exposure is great is coming good because it's a camera which is deciding the final exposure you are helping camera by controlling one of the element but it's a camera which is deciding that a uh, final exposure will be as uh, optimal as possible now we'll understand exposure balance expo ev uh, exposure compensation we say so exposure compensation sign you have seen in the camera plus minus button in nikon device in canon also we have uh, the similar sign in fuji we have a complete dial dial button you can see complete dial button for to control the exposure compensation so we'll try to understand what is this exposure compensation so you will see the light meter kind of so this is the function of exposure compensation to tell camera that this image this frame is brighter or darker so it's a kind of instruction for camera what we are giving using this function how to make your photos lighter and darker this is the function of exposure compensation it will help you camera light meter is not error free we will understand why it's not error free it can also create it can also uh, create error in images uh, you can't always rely on the light meter sometimes you have to use your own sense how the frame is looking high contrast scenes can trick your camera so in high contrast uh, condition sometimes camera is get tricky and uh, it's not uh, able to focus, do the focusing it struggle to get uh, the subject in focusing using exposure compensation in different shooting modes so when we are in different shooting modes we can use these exposure compensation like the semi modes we have exposure compensation is only available if you are shooting your cameras program mode aperture priority shutter priority only on these modes you can use this uh, exposure compensation because in manual mode it's the photographer who is deciding the light how the light will reach the sensor and how you are going to control the light so that's why the exposure compensation is only available when you are in the semi modes like program mode aperture priority and shutter priority 
we'll try to understand how it works you can see the images here so whenever we are adding its exposure value exposure compensation like plus 1 plus 2 you can see it's it's making image look brighter and try to compensate the light quality what camera is sensing uh, in actual so when we are in the zero adjustment so this is the actual exposure or the light available uh, at the time of capture but we have to we have to tell camera this uh, light is can be more brighter so we have to add more exposure plus 1 plus 2 so camera will take the same image with same lighting condition it will give you better uh, bright uh, or image uh, when we use exposure compensation and similar way when we have a frame where background is darker we can use exposure compensation to background look further dark or lit or control the darkness or uh, the light in the background so from the dark uh, area how the camera is going to sense the light from the dark area so this is the kind of exposure compensation you can see in the image the frame with the minus 3 exposure compensation it's having little darker background and frame with the minus 2 has having little more light on the background compared to other so it's giving the separation of the subject and the background so this is what we want so is plus setting will make your image brighter then the standard exposure so whatever the standard at the zero value so this is we call standard exposure so whatever we are going to plus it will give us image more more brighter image if you are going minus it will make the image more darker with each movement up or down the scale records as a stop we call it as a stop when we are talking in the camera world technical terms we'll call these settings as a stop or increment a full stop a full stop adjustment will double or half the exposure so when we are doing full stop movement it can be plus 1 or minus 1 so we'll call it as a full stop so minus 1 will half the exposure plus 1 will double the exposure so that's we that's what we need to understand but most camera offers immediate intermediate half stop or third stop so something in between so quite we can say the uh, gradual adjustments or we can say this adjustments in between very subtle adjustment now uh, for the exposure now we'll talk about shutter speed in detail that uh, shutter speed is just a measurement of time the exposure the shutter is open so most uh, most photographers uh, call it as a exposure time the sh uh, shutter measure, shutter speed uh, they'll call it as a exposure time that uh, how long the exposure remains open for that shutter speed so that's why they call it as exposure time the faster the shutter speed the shorter the time image sensor was exposed to light like the faster shutter speeds we have one by 500 fraction of seconds one by 250 all these are faster shutter speeds or slower shutter speeds like 1 second or half seconds 1/4 seconds so all these are slower shutter speed the longer the time the image sensor was exposed to light so in the example images you can in the images you can see the image on the left is captured with faster speeds it's showing the similar elements in the background and the, the person walking it's looking quite static so because of fast shutter speeds uh, there is a no movement captured but in slow shutter speeds you can see the movement captured and the moving parts coming blurry because the shutter speed was slower and the frame was not uh, the subject was not staying there for that amount of time so it's coming as blurry so it's a kind of creative photography sometimes we do it with purpose like we are going to capture any waterfall something like that will with purpose have some slower shutter speed so water flow will show you kind of milky effect in the waterfall so that that's how we use the shutter speeds uh, slower shutter speeds to make in our favor uh, excuse me yeah uh, in your uh, slide uh, you written that uh, the fast uh, the slower is the shutter speed longer the time image sensor was exposed yes so um, 
वन सेकेंड सो वन सेकेंड इज लॉन्ग टाइम कंपेयर टू फ्रैक्शन ऑफ सेकेंड लाइक वन बाई फाइव हंड्रेड इट्स हंड्रेड सेकेंड इमेज कैप्चर ऑन स्लो शटर स्पीड स्लो शटर कैमेरा के मोर टाइम Yes. Still, uh, how how can it come blur effect? Blur effect come because the if you if you can't hold yourself for one second at that same place. Mm -hmm. So the elements which are static, you can see the railing, they are not moving. So they'll come like this only. Even if you have a one minute frame, mm -hmm. they are not going to move anywhere. But if any moving part is there. you will see the moving part will come blurry okay sometimes we go in crowded place we try to do it with purpose we ask uh, uh, our our subject or the person we are going to take portrait we ask them to just hold themselves for few seconds so anything in the background crowd will not come into picture okay so that's how we make the crowd invisible in those frames mm -hmm. shutter speed so now we'll just understand the dial button and the values what we have in shutter speed as low as we can go to 30 seconds that's the limit in the camera and as high as we can go to 1 by 400 by 400 uh, 4000 uh, 1 by 4000 uh, fraction of seconds but most device now uh, latest device also supports uh, 1 by 8000 so that's the kind of device we have in the market so if you go to as low as 30 seconds and try to go beyond that and when you are in manual mode it will show you bulb so when you are in bulb mode you are deciding that how, when the shutter will open and when the shutter will close it's you controlling the shutter uh, exposure time using the shutter release button so when you press the shutter once it will open the shutter and start taking the exposure when you press the shutter release button again it will close the shutter and complete the exposure and the frame will be captured so that's the function of bulb mode choosing choosing shutter speed one step faster than the current shutter speed changing shutter speed from 160th to 135th is referred to as increasing shutter speed by one step so when we are going uh, to higher shutter speed Uh, from uh, 160 to 125 it's referring us increasing shutter speed by one step so as we have understood the steps uh, in uh, exposure composition similar uh, terms is used in the shutter speed when we are changing the value and this halves the amount of time the shutter is open so any one stop when we are doing it's doing half it's uh, reducing the time by half so half amount of time the shutter will open compared to previous shutter speed choosing shutter speed one step slower than the current shutter speed uh, it's just a reverse example of that so when we we are in uh, shutter speed of 1 by 25 so we are going to 160th of second so it's uh, referring us slower slowing shutter speed by one step so again we are going one step backward and doubles the amount of time shutter is open so it's allowing more light to come in If you are using Nikon DSLR, the shutter speed changes in one third steps. Some models also supports increment of one step and half steps. So that's the device limitation or device feature we can say. Aperture priority mode. So in aperture functions, uh, we have controls uh, on the brightness of the image that passes through the lens and falls on the image sensor. So we can control the brightness of image. using aperture you can see the example images here down so large f number increase depth of field we'll call it as a small aperture aperture large f number small aperture so always try to keep this in mind when we are talking about small aperture and large aperture small aperture means large f number so hole will be small so where the light is passing through so this is the lens hole Uh, for the aperture when it's very small we are at the large f number when we are in small f number it's decrease depth of field it will just give you very shallow depth of field because it's opening the aperture fully 
and whatever the small f number you have the depth of field will be decreased so you have to take care of it when you are in a, a small aperture so you can use depth of field calculator duff calculator available in app stores you can download and use it and see that how the depth of field is controlled it is expressed as an f number written as f slash followed by a number such as f 1.4 f2 f2.8 so all these are numbers f32 it's a very we can say small aperture aperture values used in frames decides the depth of field so depth of field is a distance in front of and behind the focus point so wherever you are taking focus measurement so whatever things behind that focus point and whatever things in front of those focus points so all these will be considered as a depth of field so the whatever the limitation you have around the focus point is your depth of field so only on that uh, part you will see the uh, things coming in focus or we can say in sharp uh, focus and other things will show you in blurry it can be behind it can be in front so all these effects you will see when you are in small f number values for aperture uh, can be as low as f 1.4 and high as f 32 depends on the lens all lens have different uh, limitations for aperture and their cost also decides based on those aperture values raising the f number one step is referred to as stopping and stepping aperture down to one f step this halves the area of the aperture or opening of the having the uh, brightness of the image that falls on the image sensor so when you are raising the f number it means you are increasing the f number we are you are making the aperture smaller so it will reduce the amount of light coming to the sensor so when you are in low light condition try to have some small f number so it will allow you get good exposure in the low light condition Lowering the f number by one step is refer referring to a stopping stepping aperture up and f stop. This doubles the amount of doubles the area of aperture or opening and doubling the brightness of the image. So as I said, so when you are using small aperture, uh, when you are using large aperture, small f number, so it will help camera to detect more to sense more light. It will allow the uh, light. Uh, it will allow more light reach the sensor by opening the aperture when you are in small f number if you are using nikon dslr f number changes in one third step some models also supports increments of one step and half step so it's the same same uh, we can say the uh, terminology or the technique we have for the aperture and the shutter priority iso sensitivity so this is very interesting topic. We have to understand that how ISO functions so, and it is actually helping you to get quality of the images. ISO sensitivity is a measure of camera's ability to capture the light. So when we are talking about uh, camera ability to sense the lights, it's all because of ISO. It's ISO which is, ISO which is helping the camera detect the light and capture it digital camera converts the light that falls on the image sensor into electrical signals for processing so when light reaches the sensor it converts sensor image sensor into uh, electrical signals for processing so image sensor converts the light into electrical signals and process it so when you are taking long exposure you must have noticed camera is taking more time for processing so if you take uh, long shots like one minute, two minutes kind of, you will see the camera is taking uh, time for image processing and sometimes you will see it's doing some zoom function notification kind of on the uh, LCD or on the uh, screen, info screen you can see that it's still uh, processing the image. It will not let you take next image until processing is complete. ISO sensitivity is raised by, raised by amplifying the signal. In other words, if ISO sensitivity is raised from 100 to 200, while aperture is left unchanged, the same exposure can be achieved with 
uh, shutter speed twice as fast so this is what i explained earlier even when when we are in aperture priority mode and we see that uh, light condition is not good and we are getting a uh, little lower shutter speed so we are not able to hold the uh, do the handheld shot so uh, do you understand what is handheld uh, shutter speed and what is normal shutter speed uh, handheld uh, what is handheld 1 by 60 or uh, 1 by 16 but the concept behind it what is why we call it as a handheld No, okay. okay let me explain you so whenever we are using a lens uh, it can be any of the uh, any any number of focal length so i'm just giving you example of uh, uh, 300 mm so 300 mm lens means we should have at least 1 by 300 shutter speed so there is no 3 1 by 300 shutter speed there will be 1 by 320 so we should have at least 1 by 320 shutter speeds when using full frame camera device full frame dslr we have we can have shutter speed of 1 by 320 it will help us to take the images while having the camera in hand so that's the handheld shutter speed if you are using lens where which is supporting vr vibration uh, vibration uh, reduction so it will help you reduce the shutter speeds further one or two or three stops depends on the vr versions we are nowadays we have different vr versions so vr version one to all these so all these versions are also coming for vibration reductions so it will help you to take down the shutter speeds more lower compared to handheld shutter speeds but if lens not supporting any vr vibration reductions or device also not having that facility then you should have at least 1 by 320 shutter speed for the 300 mm focal length so that's the same rule apply when you have 50 mm lens so device uh, device shutter speed should be 1 by 60 there is no shutter speed of 1 by 50 so you will have device shutter speed of 1 by 60 yeah. so this is we call it as a handheld shutter speed so when you are in aperture priority mode shutter speed is getting lower and you notice that it's not a handheld shutter speed so what you can do you can raise the iso so when you raise the iso you will see that shutter speed is getting higher so you are getting good amount of shutter speed so it's double the amount of time it's you will getting the faster shutter speeds and reduce the camera blur so camera blur is camera shake what we have if we are not in the handheld shutter speed this is why people say that iso sensitivity should be raised if lighting is poor so only this condition we should raise the iso there are some exceptional conditions also where we'll capture the images with purpose with high iso but uh, most of the time we should raise the iso only when lighting is poor no flash low light photography when the lighting is poor you can use the flash to light the portrait light the portrait subjects flash units however have limited range so we can have flash units so this is a manual flash unit so you can see so all these buttons and the meter you can see the how the light is going to fall the the power of light we can say this is the manual flash we can have so it is having its own range of reaching that and range is decided by the guide number the guide number is actually the cost factor in the flash device speed lights so when we have a, a lower high guide number higher guide numbers all these all these decides that uh, how how long the flash will fall uh, how the how long the light will reach uh, the subject so some flash will support 20 meters some flights will uh, support uh, more than that so some below that uh, so it's all depends that what uh, what uh, guide number is it is on the flash so you have to be very careful that what is the uh, supporting range or the distance for the flash when you are going to buying any flash unit so this is a godox flash this is uh, advanced flash and it is having more range uh, or double the amount of uh, it it will cover double the amount of distance compared to manual flash so flash units however have limited range if you raise the iso sensitivity you can optimally expose both portrait subject and the background without using flash at all so you can see the image here image on the left is taken with the flash you can see the background is dark 
and the flash is just trying to cover the or give the exposure to the subject only because it is having a limited range it can't reach the complete background or can't cover the complete background but if you are taking image without flash and using high iso sensitivity you can see everything is coming in good exposure but there is a background there is a drawback for using high iso we will understand that also that noise at high iso whenever you are raising iso it will increase the noise or image will look grainy all these uh, grainy particles we call it as a noise in technical terms when you are talking about iso in photography raising iso sensitivity allows faster shutter speed reducing blur caused by subject or camera movement but uh, in fact uh, raising iso sensitivity can introduce the type of image artifact known as noise so all these image artifact introduced when we are raising iso so be careful and only raise iso when you think that lighting is poor and you are not getting handheld shutter speed raising iso sensitivity amplifies the electrical signals uh, which also amplifies any noise in the signal so when you are uh, raising the lens uh, or the device uh, ability to sense the light it will also sense the image uh, this or we can say the particles in the air and it will show as a noise as a result the higher the iso the sensitivity the more obvious the effects of noise on your photographs the same is true of all digital cameras we recommend that you raise iso sensitivity only as high as need to avoid blur so again the thumb rule that we only raise the iso until we reach the shutter speed we need uh, for handheld uh, photography so that's all so if you have shutter if you have tripod with you then you may you may be able to work with the lower shutter speed also because you will give more stability to the device so you can see the range of iso from 100 to 12800 high how the iso will behave uh, or raise or create the noise in the image iso sensitivity can be set manually by the photographer or automatically by the camera so this we need to take care whenever we have camera with us so we will have ability to set the iso on auto also but it is good to have iso in the manual uh, manual mode so we will decide that when the iso need to be raised when we need to have high iso just to get better shutter speed because auto iso sometimes we will try to overexpose everything in the frame and you may miss your miss your shot that would be the possible camera simulator app so this is what i have introduced in this uh, workshop starting from today only uh, so i found this i was just looking for the uh, any uh, possibility how we can play with the settings how we can uh, give you the live feel of that how the settings behave so what we have studied so far all these aspects shutter speed aperture and iso we'll see how they functions and there is a simulator app lot of simulator app available in the market in the online internet you can find it there are some softwares also but i found this uh, online app from canon it's a manufacturer application and it's really they give you advanced options to control it and you can see copy it and i really found it really found it very useful So this is a simulator app online available you can easily go to this website canon outside of auto.ca/play so this website is really good i found simulator it's really behaving nicely so you can see this image sample image they have and we can see the light exposure and the quality of exposure what we have in you know, our different settings so if we are in shutter priority 
we can we have only control on the shutter speed you can see so when you are changing shutter speed you can see it's affecting the aperture so at 1 second we are getting aperture of 22 f22 at 150 when uh, 250 seconds of 1 by 250 seconds of shutter speed we are getting aperture of 2.8 so what exposure will be always good so you will see exposure will be always good and the great benefit of using this tool uh, is that you can even see that uh, how actually it will work in the camera even if you don't have dslr camera you can use this application and when we click on the camera button it will take the image and it will show you how the uh, capture will be in your real time so when you are doing this same uh, settings similar kind of work and this is the similar kind of image you will see so at 1 by 250 of second is not good enough to freeze the wings uh, of this plane fan is still moving so you can't freeze the fan when you are using uh, shutter speed of 250 so we'll just raise the shutter speed of maximum possible so 1 by 4000 is the limit we have so you can see it's reduced the aperture 2.8 so it's not allowing us to play with the iso but in real time dslr we have option to work with iso so this is already increased to maximum allowed 6400 for good exposure let's see how the good exposure it is yeah so you can see the fan is now completely still we can study different value with this app yes yes it's really good so it will give you sense that when you are going in the real time how it will affect so now we'll just work with the aperture we have just done the shutter speed now we'll see how the aperture is behaving so i'm just taking the aperture at the maximum f22 we can see the shutter speed is reduced to compensate the exposure and exposure meter is saying good exposure we will capture it so you can see everything is in focus from pro foreground to background everything is in focus and because of slow shutter speed so this is what i want to show because of slow shutter speeds now fan is almost invisible yeah so that's what we do in real time when we go in a crowdy place crowded place mm -hmm. we sometimes create a creative shots like that we want with purpose to crowd look look a little bit blurry not invisible sometime mm -hmm. so to create creative compositions so now we'll see the aperture f4 now you can see our focal focus point is the plane yeah this is what in in the good focus also anything in behind is blurry anything in the front is blurry so this is the depth of field only covering this part of plane in manual mode we have complete liberty or ability to control these functions so if i'll choose wrong combination with the purpose you can see my expo my light meter is saying it's overexposed let's see so this is the wrong combination our creative combination we can say in uh, dslr sometimes we do with our purpose to get a overexposed image for high key portrait for photography and just observe the light meter here when i'm changing the value so at 2.8 aperture at 
This is the combination where we am, I am getting the good exposure. If I am going higher, exposure getting underexposed. If I am getting going lower or long shutter speed, it's, it's getting overexposed. But this is the value where I am getting the good exposure. So we have to take care of the light meter. This is the same approach we should have in the light meter when we are in the uh, DSLR camera settings. We should observe that how the light meter is behaving. And when I am increasing the ISO, let's say it is in 400, I am raising the ISO. You can see the image is getting little overexposed. So what I am doing going to do, I am increasing the shutter speeds. So aperture remains same 2.8. I raised ISO and it helps me to get more shutter speed. But if I don't want shutter speed more, what I can do? I can raise the aperture 3.5. I'm, I'm getting the good shutter speed. So this is the benefit of using manual ISO. You can decide that what value you need to increase. So if you need more aperture and F number, if you need higher shutter speed, so you can get benefit of it. Most device supports good ISO nowadays. So depends, you need to test your device at different ISO level. So this is a good exposure image. Nothing is underexposed, nothing is overexposed. It, it, it is really helpful. You should try it. Yeah, sure. Now we are in focusing mode. So we will understand what are the focusing modes available and how they, they really impact our images and how we can control them one shot focusing mode so one shot focusing mode we'll call it in canon in nikon we call it as afs single shot so it means it's taking the focus only once so it's a uh, calculate it is log it is taking focus and locking the focus so it's just do not doing any further focusing we are focusing with the in the single shot mode afs when we are pressing the shutter release button halfway it will lock the exposure it will show you green uh, square so there the focus will be locked so when you fully depress the shutter release button it will complete the exposure but if you don't fully depress shutter release, depress the button shutter release button it will lock the focus and even if you move or subject move the focus will not change it will remain at that distance only so you need to be very careful when you are working with single shot you you should you should not have too much movement when you are working with single shot or one shot in this mode when you depress the shutter release halfway the camera focuses on the subject just once there's no continuous adjustment this mode saves battery power and is ideal for subjects that are that aren't moving so be careful when you are working with the single shot modes most of the time i used to work with single shot single shot mode because uh, I'm used to work with the subject with which are not moving. So that's a, that's up to you that what kind of photography you are doing. The single, single, when you are in single shot, one shot, you'll see the focal points like this and your one sensor will be active. This is the active sensor, which is calculating the focus. On screen of the device, you'll see the camera settings in Nikon, it will show you modes like that AFS how it is selected focus mode in Canon uh, it will call it as AF mode and uh, one shot is selected here you can see we have AI focus also AI survey also we will understand those also what are those continuous focusing mode AI servo AF in Canon and AFC in Nikon stands for continuous focus mode and this mode is most useful for keeping 
moving uh, object sharp within the viewfinder as you track the object so you should be able to track the uh, subject or object so you should, have, should follow the subject keep your focal point on that so camera will keep calculating the focus when you press the shutter release button it will just make sure that focus is recalculated and captured when the subject uh, right on the focal point so if you miss the subject uh, you will miss the focus also it will go somewhere else and calculate it the focus so on the different element in continuous focusing modes the camera detects the uh, subject's movement and refocuses accordingly to keep the object sharp as tracked we always want our subject uh, or element uh, look come in good sharp focus so that's the trick of it that you always have your focal point on the subject when you are in continuous focus focusing mode this mode uses a lot of battery power because it is continuously focusing and refocusing so when camera keep calculating the focus it all demands more power because it's a mechanism camera having own mechanism it is using those and when you are when camera using those mechanism it will use the battery so make sure when you are in continuous focusing mode and uh, going for a trip a kind of so have one extra back battery with you for the backup in camera settings it will show us uh, af scene focus mode on nikon device in canon it will be ai servo now we'll understand auto automatic fo auto focus mode so this is ai focus af in canon and afa in nikon it's auto focusing mode which stands for automatic auto focus so this is the default auto focus mode on camera that have this feature so when you bought a new camera it is the default mode so camera will decide the subject is still or moving subject and accordingly it will change the focusing mode you have to remember that photography can be an art and in art you have to go with what's in your mind's eye so what is what uh, what sense of view you have on the frame it's uh, you who is going to decide so sometimes camera may not uh, may not uh, camera may try to uh, identify the subject is moving but you know subject is not moving that much and that shutter speed should be good enough for you so it's up to it's up to us like the example we have seen for the being a fan of that plane for camera it's a kind of movement but for us we know it's a fan and it is going to be like that only so this mode maintains focus if you change subject or subjects move so if subject is moving out of frame or moving away from the focal point it will change it it will change the focusing modes and uh, in the camera settings it will focus in the focus mode you will see afa as the option of uh, selecting the auto servo or af auto focusing mode and in canon it's ai focus so if subject moves auto switches from one shared one shot af to ai servo so it's notifying you that when you are in auto focusing mode manual focusing mode so this is this interesting that when you are when you want to have your camera in manual focusing mode so you have options to do this setting in the camera in camera you have settings to change the focusing modes in manual focus or in the device also you have sometimes in the device itself camera device you have button to switch between af to am or it's auto focus and manual focus or in the lens also you have the buttons a and m af and m so this kind of buttons you see in the lenses also so all these options of label where you can control the focusing modes but uh, i always advise to use the buttons instead of going into the settings because going into the settings and sometimes it's difficult to quickly change the settings and we'll miss the shot so we try to use the buttons only on many lenses you would see af mf switch or for focus mode selection manually focusing uh, the camera is perhaps the most frustrating barrier between the good and great photography so if you are uh, new to the photography try to work with the auto focusing only let the camera decide which is the uh, best focus uh, calculation for the frame 
and once you are get into it uh, and there will be some uh, situation where you have to work with the manual focus like we do in the macro photography in macro, macro photography we always have to rely on the manual focusing it's very difficult to calculate those shallow depth of field by the camera even when we are using extension tubes so extension tubes are just attachments between the lens and the camera so it'll all all when you attach extension tubes so most att- extension tubes uh, are not uh, electrical so they are just a kind of tubes and attachment between the lens and the camera electrical signals will be disconnected so you will not have any control on those uh, settings so camera will not be able to detect the focus so in, in that part also will calculate you have to calculate in the manual focus automatically your your camera will shift uh, to the manual focus when you are using those extension tubes so achieving perfect focus requires using the distance measurement on the lens barrel and even perhaps measuring the distance from the lens to the subject with the tape measurement so many professional prep photographers they do carry the measurement tape with them to measure the distance and they they use the applications to calculate the depth of field all these uh, things combinations uh, will help us to identify at what distance using this lens will get uh, the depth, this kind of depth of field and our subject will be at that much distance so if when we have all these calculation with us we can work with the manual focus and this will give you most accurate focus point so this is the benefit of it that manual f- focus is the only way to get the best focus from your camera so th- that's the trick manual focusing mode there is a darker adjustment also on the most dslr so this is just to adjust the irregularities if you have in your eyes if, if you are using specs so you don't need to use it when you are using these functions you can adjust the uh, that uh, we can say the view finder according to your eyes and when you see the things looking sharp you can just stop the adjustment so you don't need to wear specs when you are using the depth adjustment you can also use the depth of field preview button some device supports this pv button so it will help you to give you idea that what kind of uh, result you are going to get after com- completing the shot so in your dslr when you take a picture you will see the effect of aperture and the depth of field blurness how the Uh, bokeh is coming in the image but if you are using pv button you can get it before even capture the image manual focus is essential when you focus on non traditional subject for example a subject that is in the background uh, when the foreground is busy and dominating so when camera is struggling for detecting your subject or focus is not able to focus on the subject in those scenario those conditions uh you can use the manual focus man it will it is really helpful focus indicators blinking keeps works even when you are in manual focus mode so in your camera uh, when you are in view finder you must have noticed one dot it's keep blinking so when it will it will only stop when you lock the focus you can try it so it will it will give you idea that how the fo- focus is getting locked so when the focus is locked uh, that blinky will stop and the trick is that function still works even when you are in manual focus so what you have to do you have to half press the shutter release button assuming that you are locking the focus and keep move the uh, focus focusing ring on the lens and have your focal point on the subject so when your subject is coming in good focus and uh, it will detect the camera mechanism will still work and it will detect that subject is coming in focus whatever in front of the focal point and it will stop the blinking so you will understand that you are able to get a good focus even without even with the manual focus mechanism so that's a trick in canon it beeps so that's a trick when we are in the canon device it will be it will make a beep sound when a subject is getting in good focus that's how you can achieve a good sharp focus even with the manual focus on confused so this is really confusing sometimes 
can we figure out when we should use manual focus and versus the uh, better to use an auto focus mode so it depends that how you are comfortable with the focusing modes auto focus mode is one where the camera determines the sharpest focus using sensors that are developed to measuring the focus of the sense so auto focusing mode is designed or developed in a way to detect the sharpest focus points so most of the time it will give you accurate result but there are some exceptions as i said there are some exceptions when you have to rely on the manual focus so it's up to you how you want you to improve or the skills to improve most of the time most of the time we will work with the auto focusing mode but there are some exception cases or scenario light conditions where we'll going to use the manual focus auto focusing versus manual focusing which focus mode you are in so it's very easy to identify you can see in the camera notifications info screen we can see it's afa is showing showing in the in the canon device it is showing this one shot af so that's how we can identify which uh, focus mode we are in in the camera settings some some sometimes we, you can set the focus mode on the interchangeable lens as i said on the lens also we have switch so if you are using those switches then it will be more easy for you to control all these uh, focusing systems and it's very easy to moving between the auto focus and manual focus when you are in the uh, when you are using the uh, buttons manual focus mode with manual focus you are going to use the palm of your left hand to cup the lens so this is what you have to control the lens how you camera so when you are in manual focus so you have to hold your hand near to your body just to give more stability and make your hand like it just kind of stable place and you can use your fingers like that so it will help you to move the ring focusing ring and most of the time you will see that you are getting good focus good result even with the manual focus if you are using this technique then use your left hand finger slightly to is the auto focusing uh, focusing ring on the dslr lens until the image is in sharp so as i said uh, it will give you more control when you are having uh, using this technique and controlling the holding the camera in a right way so that is really interesting and easy way to get a good sharp focus in even when you are in the manual mode holding camera properly is the key aspects of making use of manual focus so if you are if you are comfortable with the hold, handheld if you know how to hold the camera correctly then you are in more better uh, we can say the more better uh, i think what I, what I should say if you are if you are if you know how you can control or hold the camera handheld you are will in more better situation to get your images in good sharp focus even with, without a tripod so that uh, that's the recommended to have that's a recommendation to have study tripod uh, for manual focus so when you are working with the only manual focuses like macro photography are going on so it's it's, all, it's always advised to have macro uh, photography using a tripod or when you are going in a long exposure kind of photography where you can't hold hand hold the device for long time you will use the tripod auto focus af single servo is good for stationary subjects as the focus locks when the shutter is pressed halfway afc is continuous servo so we have already understood all these points but it's auto focus which is deciding the camera will decide that the subject is moving or still the auto focus continuously can adjust auto focus afa auto servo allows the camera to choose which of the two auto focus modes are is more appropriate to you so this is the this is the afa function when come into picture uh, to decide that this is the moving subject or this is a still subject and it has to select that mode metering modes metering modes are one of the most powerful and underutilized settings 
on your digital camera so how much you have played with metimors apne have you have you ever tried no no so you haven't tried so this is sometimes a we can say the big difference between a uh, professional photographer and a good photographer or average photographer that how you are controlling or you how you how you are aware how much you are aware of the metering modes so it will make big difference in the quality of images also best photographers always start with the best original photo so when you see images in your camera after capturing if it is looking at the best exposure or the best quality what you want so this is where the photography starts photography starts getting improving that you if you are seeing the best images on the camera definitely it will going with a great image for your after completing post processing work and that can only happen when you get a proper exposure getting proper exposure depends heavily on how you control your camera metering modes it's heavily depends on metering modes in nikon we have matrix metering center weighted metering spot metering in canon we have evaluative metering partial metering spot metering center weighted metering so you can see in canon we have one extra one partial metering mode we'll understand that what is if that and how it is different and if it's really making going to going to make any impact matrix and evaluative metering so both have same function in canon we call it as a evaluative metering in nikon we call it as a matrix metering so this is the default metering mode for most dslrs so when you bought uh, any dslr uh, it will come with the default metering mode matrix metering in the nikon it reads the light from the whole scene so whatever you see in the frame through the viewfinder camera is trying to calculate the average exposure using all the elements so whatever is viewing through the viewfinder camera is taking exposure value from all the elements so 100% of the frame is being used for uh, calculation for the average exposure it measures the several points uh, from around the frame and calculate the average exposure it is ba- biased to the focus point selected it is really depend on the focus point which you select and center focus point is uh, considered to be the most powerful focus point but it also takes into account several focus point uh, factors including distance to the subject colors of the scenes in uh, focus area and other elements so colors distance all these also getting into picture or getting into consideration for calculation in order to find the best exposure for the whole scene the mode is excellent under following circumstances you want to work fast with minimal change in settings the light condition is changing quickly you are covering actions and angle to, to the subject is changing quickly and when your subject is changing angle very quickly so you can't do change in settings for the exposure so it's a camera which is deciding that uh, this will be the good exposure so camera will make sure that you will get good optimal exposure in the matrix metering so lighting and contrast are not extreme so when light conditions are not or too much uh, we can say the under under expose or to not too much low light condition or not too over bright condition in a sunny day like that so light condition should be good balance so in that way in that condition uh, you can work with the matrix metering mode in some cameras extra weight is given to the point that is near to the focal point that is being used so whenever you are selecting different focal points in your device the camera will give you camera give more weightage to the focal point which is selected so that is the considered as the more uh, we can say the powerful focal point and it will try to calculate the average value for the exposure around those focal points so it will give you extra it will give extra weight to that point center weighted metering so as in the name suggests our subject should be in center and why because it's taking exposures about 60 to 80% Uh, around the centers only so actual frame and focusing on the center this mode operates under assumptions that you will most likely center your subject in the viewfinder so it is the assumption that you are going to have your subject in the center when you would use when you would choose the center weighted metering mode so it's perfect for even situations like a wedding in wedding photographer most of the time they work with the center weighted metering mode 
you don't want the background into to influence your metering reading so you don't want the background lighting coming from the corners and all it will influence it will influence your exposure calculations so that's that's the place actually we use center weighted metering you try to meter a light from object against a dark background so again if your contrast conditions is there if something is uh, really dark in the background then center weighted metering is really helpful because it is going to take the exposure calculations so whatever in the center subject uh, you want to keep your subject in the center within the frame such as portrait so in most of the time you'll see in portraits we try to use this technique it can be group photo it can be single portrait uh, photo but we have to have our subject in the center most useful in event photography where the use of spot metering mode is not practical so this is a good tip that uh, when a spot metering mode is not practical or uh, you can't easily have uh, expose your focal point right on the subject it depends uh, on the what kind of frame you are creating so in that mode in that uh, event photography you can easily use it center weighted metering mode spot metering spot metering mode is the most accurate and hardest metering modes to use so as i said spot metering is really is really accurate because it's taking a calculation from 1 to 5% of from that spot what where you're focus having focal point so you'll going to get that exposure only from that point around that 1 to 5% uh, of the total image area that you see in the viewfinders so it's a very tight calculation so you have to have your focal point right on the point from where you want to calculate the average exposure value it's usually represent a small uh, red dot and fix directly in the center when you see through the viewfinder you would see it by pointing it uh, the subject element that you want to take the meter reading from so we have to directly point that uh, focal point on the subject from where we want to take the reading the most metering mode the spot metering mode is extremely useful it allows you to exactly fine tune your exposure so it is really giving you good control in the exposure calculation the camera won't be fooled by an extreme contrast situations so anything in the background like a backlight or something uh, camera will not uh, try, even try to calculate any any average value from those uh, light source it will take the exposure only from the point where you have the focal point on the subject you can get the accurate meter reading from an object where you have set the focal point so it's giving you accurate meter reading so there will be very very rare chance or, or rare conditions you will you will struggle with that but it will give you accurate light meter reading it will allow you to uh, accurately determine an, an exposure setting for a bright object against a dark background so again it's a uh, the similar point that uh, it is it is really good uh, way to get good uh, good uh, good uh, good uh, we can say the uh, it's a it's a very good way to get a good uh, calculation of the exposure using a spot metering because what it's doing it's uh, taking all the calculation from the spot and even if they having the bright condition bright object against a dark background or it said it can be the reverse it can be having a dark subject in front of a bright backgrounds like in outdoor photography in all these conditions it will help you to get a good exposure from the spot make sure you you always check your camera meter reading before shooting to ensure you are getting a correct exposure so always try to have a look on the meter metering modes when you are trying to, when you are trying to take a photo uh, it can be indoor it can be outdoor so when you have a good control on the metering mode you will definitely get a good quality of exposure in your final image partial metering mode so this is interesting to because it's supported only in uh, canon devices so you will see that uh, it's a combination of uh, different metering modes it's a combination of spot metering and center weighted metering partial metering is similar to spot metering but uh, an extended area of the frame which is repeated uh, light measures 20% of the frame so it's a combination of uh, we can say as i said it's a combination it's a kind of a 
कम्बिनेशन ऑफ स्पॉट मीटरिंग सेंटर वेटेड बिकॉज आई वी कैन हैव डिफरेंट इमेज का एक्सपोजर कैलकुलेशन फ्रॉम डिफरेंट पार्ट सो इट्स गिविंग यू ए मिड वैल्यू बिटवीन द स्पॉट मीटरिंग एंड द सेंटर वेटेड मीटरिंग सेंटर वेटेड मीटरिंग मीटरिंग इट वॉज सिक्सटी टू एटी परसेंट एंड स्पॉट मीटरिंग वॉज वन टू फाइव परसेंट एंड इन दिस मोड वील हैव ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ इमेज कैलकुलेशन अराउंड दोज सेलेक्शन पॉइंट्स फॉर एक्सपोजर कैलकुलेशंस दिस मोड सर्व एज द मिडल पॉइंट बिटवीन द स्पॉट स्पॉट मीटरिंग एंड सेंटर वेटेड एवरेज मीटरिंग सिमिलर टू द स्पॉट मीटरिंग similar to spot meeting it is useful when some areas of the scene would affect the overall exposure making it too dark or too light so it it's like this uh, spot meeting only but function in a large way because we have a uh, large portion of the frame to for uh, calculating our average value for exposure it has new it has a few benefits creates a tight accurate reading from approximately 20% of the image area works like the spot metering mode but takes into account a larger area so as i said it's work like a spot metering only because it's taking average uh, exposure calculation only from those spots but we have a different spot selections uh, options available so we'll ha- we'll have image calculation or the exposure calculation from different part of the frame the metering area is often adjustable allowing you to move it around the viewfinder uh what we'll have we have a some kind of frame framing in the viewfinder so we can move all those frames for image exposure calculations use center weighted metering mode instead of partial meet mode if that mode is not available in your camera so if your mode is not if your camera is not having partial metering mode then it's better to have uh, use only center weighted metering mode because uh, sport mode sport metering mode is not going to help you because it's having very tight uh, exposure calculation uh, area so center weighted metering mode is only available option if you having a nikon device where you can't work with the partial metering mode so we have discussed lot about the light meter and all so i was having a physical light meter with me so this is the physical light meter device uh, light meter device we usually have when we are working with the product photo or still life photographer in a in a studio light environment because uh, this will give us a good a quality of exposure on the final product so here it works same uh, we have to just uh, turn it on and click on this button the big one and it will it will just start blinking the flash icon so we have to just keep it in front of that uh, light source and just take one exposure and it will just show us the reading that what kind of uh, what f aperture f number we should use to get good quality exposure initially it was actually heavily used by the video photographers when they are taking interviews to calculate exposure so now we will talk about composition techniques so when we are talking about composition techniques uh, rule of third is always come into our mind and because this is the first and foremost a uh, basic rule and it is very impactful so when you are applying this uh, role in our photography it will raise the quality of images and uh, you will feel that uh, the re- image quality visual sense it's totally improving when we are using this role uh, in our framing so if you see this image uh, when we have a rule of third apply it means we have two vertical lines two horizontal lines crossing inter, inter- uh, each other in equal parts uh, this is creating three equal horizontal and three equal vertical parts in our frames so wherever they are crossing each other we call it as a focal point intersection points so these are the points where we want to have our elements touching some part so it can be edge of it can be main element we can have it around those intersection points so we have to use it very carefully so this is a, one of the most talked about composition techniques perhaps because it is so simple to implement but also because of what it suggests 
all you need to do is to divide your frame vertically into three equal parts and horizontally into three equal parts by placing your subject on one of the four points where these dividing lines meet so on one of the four points you can have your uh, interesting element subject uh, on those points so it'll it'll make your frame uh, according to rule of thirds composition technique you will encourage the viewer uh, away from the center of the frame this for, this forces them to look around the image and makes your composition more interesting so if you see this frame i have different elements oh, i want my focal points to be around the bowl around the edge of this wooden tray covering the elements around nearby you can see it's touching almost everything so that's how we can use it in our frame we can see a few examples of rule of thirds so this is scene composition we have elements we have we have subjects we have cinematic visual so here you can see i've covered the focal point to um, capture the interesting uh, focal points we can have we have this some actions going on here so these are the interesting we can say the points we have around the focal points that's how we can use the rule of third this is action composition objects and subjects complex visual even in the complex visual we can have this rule applied and it helps to create a frame So all these are the inter interesting elements. I have all the four focal points. You can see it lies beautifully. Um, I have some elements in the background, so it's also covering that all that part. So that's how you can even use it in a complex uh, visuals uh, where you have something, some actions going on in the uh, uh, complete frame. So that's a very good example for rule of third covering all the four focal points. Our next composition technique is cut out of unnecessary elements. So there are different naming conventions for all these techniques, but uh, uh, we we call we will make it as a more simpler way because when we are taking out any elements which is creating distraction in the frame, uh, we'll just try to improve the quality of visual, uh, to overall quality of the visual. So your goal when composing photograph uh, should be point to do something. Point to something you want your viewer to look at, what you are trying to show them. So your goal is just to have your subject. Uh, we can say the it's looking uh, more uh, interesting, or your your viewer is going to just feel the subject. What is what you are what you have subject in your frame. So your viewer eye should be travel around those uh, subjects only. So that's your aim as a photographer. One way you can do this by cutting out all the clutters of the world and just showing them what you want them to see. So whatever the things in the background, I don't want my viewer to observe all those. I want my viewers to observe only the cactus, what, what I have my main subject. A few ways you can achieve this in photography, including getting closer to your subjects, you can get more closure. So nothing will be shown in the uh, uh, background or around the subject using a longer focal length so for a narrower field of view you can have longer focal length you can get more closer so everything will be blown out in the background uh, using depth of field to isolate your subject from other elements uh, in the scene so you can have your uh, sub depth of field utilized so that we have understood with the aperture so if we have good uh, very shallow depth of field so every everything in the background will be blurred so nothing will be visible to viewer so only subject will be in the full focus we'll see the example of it and using your shadow to hide the things uh, to do not things that do not contribute to message you are trying to give so if, if we have shadows playing around it we can use it to hide the elements around the subject but in this photo actually i use a post processing technique just to hide the elements around it and my final image was like this 
So this is my final image and you can see both images, they both have different feeling altogether. That's the benefit of removing the distractions around the subject. So this is the example, I isolate the subject. So whatever in the background, there was a tree. So because fortunately there was a good distance between the subject and the tree and everything was blurred out. I was having f, f, f 5.6 aperture, 300 mm lens. So it's a zoom lens. So it's helped me to get quality of blur, a bouquet image. In this photo of the butterfly on a wildflower, I set aperture f 5.6 widest possible on 70 300 mm so this is the widest possible aperture we have on 300 mm uh, focal length for the lens of 70 300 mm it supports 4.5 on 70 mm but for if you are using 300 mm full focal length uh, it'll restrict you 5.6 which is not very wide but results in a very blurred background when using with full zooming in subject this focuses attention on butterfly as blurred of the background is now less distracting or we can see it's very minimal so only some patches we can see some highlights and dark spots gray area so but overall it's looking very clean image this technique technique is excellent is an excellent way to simplify a composition so we are just trying to achieve a simple composition simplifying there is nothing much distraction so that's so our aim is as a photographer isolating the subject so what i've done i've just used a white aperture 3.5 so you can see 85 mm lens it's a prime lens and i managed to blurred out the background it's a street photography portrait and the background is very minimal you can see it's a very clean image in this photo of a man portrait i set aperture f of f3.5 uh, which is very wide and results in very blurred background this focuses our attention on the subject and this has worked very well on the busy street in local market area so if we are in a local crowded market area you can use this technique to get your amazing portrait then you'll show the amazing colors if you are doing color photo in a color photo color uh, uh, you are retaining the colors in the image sometimes you'll get amazing results they are beautiful bold colors in your background here elements in the background completely blurred and not creating any distraction which is looking good for the portrait captured on a street leading lines so this is our next composition techniques leading lines so it's very widely used in our leading line techniques it's a very simple way to use lines for their drawing power so because lines draw attention to the point where it ends so that's the power of using leading lines lines that are simply graphic can be used to lead the viewer around your image so in this image you can see it's the buildings uh, line you can see in the edges how it's taking on top and i can see a bird over fly it's a very fortunate shot i got at that time so it's really looking good uh, when it's uh, leading to the top these are called leading lines or sport end lines. So it's leading to a sport. Sometimes we call it as a sport end line also, composition technique. When you are looking at the scene and deciding how much to compose it, consider what your subject is first, then consider what elements in the scene might draw the viewer towards, the, towards that subject. So if you are selecting any subject and if you are fortunate enough and find some lines which are leading to subject, it's better to use those and it'll really improve and enhance the impact uh, visual for the image. Can you find a reading, uh, receding lines like a fence that draws you to the old house or the hill? So these are just examples that what kind of uh, opportunities you can have for leading lines. Maybe there's a crack in the concrete leading to a flower growing at the base of the walls. The viewer's eyes will naturally follow these lines so they can be very useful in directing people to what you want them to look at so when you are trying to direct your viewer's eyes to a particular spot you can easily use this technique called leading lines or spot end line so these are just examples diagonal lines i've used 
so when you are using diagonal lines in your frames they'll add more impact they create more tension and it's a kind of energy will have in the frame vertical line also used it's a moment capture so i'm just capturing a moment and fortunately i was able to have some lines in the frame so whenever you have lines in your image frame then it will really helpful to image improve the quality of the visual so this is also kind of a, a unique or we can say the very interesting way to use leading lines when you have zigzag line in your frames so it's not a diagonal it's not a vertical it's a zigzag line we have one diagonal line also so it's a nature photography so whenever you have lines in your frames they always create some uh, you can say the very interesting uh, sense or the, it's really create a it's a put life in image overall so when we have a lines in our image they'll they'll will look more impactful than compared to the image where in having no lines this is our next composition technique repetition so when we'll say repetition it means we are having some patterns some texture which is creating a repetitive uh, patterns in the photo like in this example you can see the flowers petals are quite repetitive they are in repeating patterns they are quite similar so thing so they can be arranged uh, to create repetitive repetitive patterns in your photography so it can be any element things like uh, fence posts like lines or pedestrian crossing so you must have seen ped pedestrian crossing so these are also very good example of uh, repetitive patterns some or kind of or sort of trees anything that can be arranged into a repeating pattern can be bring a great intensity to a photograph so all these techniques uh, are just adding some energy to the frame it can be leading line it can be repetitive pattern so repetitions all these are what what they are doing they are just adding some energy to the frame anything depending on the subject matter it may be calming like the row of pillars of building or alarming like endless rows of people walking in the time so it means when you are taking using this technique with uh, elements which are not moving it will give it will give you more calm effect a uh, very smooth effect or uh, feeling on the overall frame if you are capturing something moving the elements it can be row it can be crowded uh, street crowded in a street it can be a uh, group of animals or something like that so all these are will will be looking repetitive repetition pattern but uh, they will be giving you different sense of feeling so they will be look very alarming very energetic so the complete feeling will be different depends on the uh, scene or the selection of the subject uh, there are uh, these options to means this combination mm -hmm. to set uh there are the options in camera to set these combinations different these are composition techniques it means we are deciding how we are creating our frame so it is beyond the camera settings so it is your uh, we can say the element selection and your subject uh, placement all these techniques are deciding or helping you to uh, place your subject in the around the focal point helping you to find some interesting element elements and use it within your frame and use it uh, with your subject to add more impact in your visual mm -hmm. so these are composition techniques okay. these are beyond camera settings okay. so when you are comfortable with camera settings you can use these composition techniques to work on the creating different uh, photography frames so you will understand how what is the exact photography meaning and what what it means when we use all these composition techniques so whenever we are reading any image we have some sense scientifically proved when we see any image we see the image around those four focal points which has created with the rule of third so this is scientifically proved that whenever we see any image we see the image around those focal points so you must have seen a school photograph where a group of students sitting 
it's a group photo but when we start reading those images we start from the corners not right from the center mm. this is human nature and it's scientifically proved that when we are reading any image we have some sense to follow and uh, this is we called in camera world we call it as composition techniques so there are some additional techniques and like what we have discussed leading lines repetition so all these are different we can say the techniques which are raising our senses how we see the image and it will create different feeling altogether so like the, like in this photo we have patterns so pedestrian line we have used so it can be calmness it can be harmony because it's it's a morning time not much crowd in the street we have patterns in the nature it's very easily to find patterns in nature not regular but still in harmony so all these are patterns now we have a final composition technique it's layers creating layers so it's very interesting composition techniques on the one technique is for adding depth to your images layering things over the top of the other things we'll sometimes we call this composition techniques or up things and it means we are putting something up on one layer to other simply but simply put you can cover part of your frame with something closer to the camera in order to give the illusion of depth like the tree i have used here in front of the tigers so it's creating illusion of the depth you can use the leaves uh, of a tree to frame a couple with the park so these are the kind of photography uh, we have seen uh, in a journal when we are seeing the wedding photographs and all you uh, must have seen the things elements how they are using to cover the subject to add some depth uh, feeling in the frame empty juice glasses while the server pours the fresh ones in the background so in the event photography we must have seen all these kind of images where some action is going on and we have some something happening in the background also in a sports photography it's very common to see or an audience uh, listening to a speaker on stage at corporate event can make a good frame that don't simply show the speaker out of context so it means uh, we are covering an event where we are seeing some, seeing something is happening or it's a kind of it's a, it can be a, a event photography where speaker is giving a speech and from the background you are taking a photo while covering the speaker and showing the audience so it's completing the story all of these things not only fill the uh, frame fill your frame with the interesting elements the further the story you are trying to tell it will help to explain or tell the story what you are trying to sh show uh, create a picture of uh, in the particular event so it's help us to complete a frame when we are using all these techniques so we can see the first layer we have we have second layer with the tiger where i had my focus and the third layer is the background so this is where i i was having focus around the splash so for conclusion uh, these are not the only composition techniques there are many more i have uh, complete dedicated two more modules only for compositions i have total 24 composition techniques to discuss and explain so it's a quite a lengthy topic but what i've told you what i've done here i just showed you the basic composition techniques what we can easily use in our general photography and it will really help us to improve the quality of images what we are capturing now with knowledge of camera settings and the uh, how it behaves in different settings uh, for different light conditions and if you have control on or knowledge on the composition techniques also it will really help you to give you a good start for photography and in this basic photography workshop so uh, these are the only more, that much of topic i can cover so hopefully it will really help you and you have some actionable items here uh, which you can work upon and improve so as you know we i'm co also collaborating with the stellar so they are offering a uh, photo recovery software and you also have opportunity uh, if you need the photo recovery software uh, subscription for one month you can just simply ask me i'll i'll just send me a mail uh, you can confirm me on the email 
that you need it I, what i'll do i'll just get you a, a link where you can uh, apply for this uh, one month free subscriptions you can use full version of software at no cost just to test it out and uh, why we use the software so software photo recovery software and how it can help you i'll just try to explain and how it functions at times when we use these uh, storage media we can accidentally damage or delete the data so sometimes a uh, file your memory card gets corrupted sometimes accidentally file deleted on the camera and you will you will feel that you lost the frame or your uh, shot what you captured so it's not it's a very very painful that when we lost our image in some uh, incident like that so you can still use the uh, the recovery tools like the stellar photo recovery you can easily recover the image uh, even if it's deleted the memory card got damaged or something like that you can easily recover that so it's for windows and mac pc so there are option to recover photo so there is a option to recover uh, uh, deleted photo uh, it can be uh, photo it can be video it can be audio files uh, and when you emptied it from your computer it can recover not from even your memory card even if you have your file on your computer it helps you to recover from that part also so hard drive smartphones dslr cameras ssd cards so all these are supported we can say the medium from where it can recover it also supports recovery of raw file formats of camera so even if the large raw files can be recovered using this software recovery from formatted drive so if you have uh, some problem with the hard disk uh, even in that case also it can recover it performs deep scan and recovers every bit of lost and deleted photos a feature especially useful in case of several corrupt volume and storage media so hard hard drive sometimes get damaged it's very old sometimes so it can it can get damaged or it's very difficult to recover but uh, this software is helpful to recover the data for uh, deleted photos and videos recover from bad, bad sector so no, not sure if you are understood these terms but these are technical terms uh, in computer world that uh, bad sectors uh, it's kind of a, uh, we can say the places where the information written in the hard disk so these are some tracks and sectors where information written gets written in the hard disk and sometimes they get corrupted and then get really bad where even uh, it not it's not able to open the file or folder so in that case also it can recover recover the data easily uh, it supports the cap media capacity uh, up to 6 tb so if you have hard drives uh, external hard drive of, of 6 tb capacity even that case also it can recover sd card so as i said so it can easily recover your photo video audio files from corrupted memory cards can easily recover and all these are supported media cards uh, manufacturers you can have all different brands all are supported even drone cameras for rating i give it so give it software 4.5 out of 5 because uh, it's excellent software but the thing is when you start the recovery process in the last phase it will not allow you to stop the process so so depends on how much data you are trying to recover so if it's a very huge amount of data you are recovering at the last phase when it starts doing final recovery you can't cancel the process so you have to wait you have to let the computer run for that amount of time so only for that reason i give it as a 4.5 rating otherwise it's a very really excellent software if you're really frequently working with the uh, photos of uh, you can see the files movement from one media to another media so they also got rating from the ndtv also so let me just give you some brief uh, information of the upcoming photo photography workshop and photo works i have so for the photo work and uh, workshop the next free one i have on 5th march is free photo work and 5th march uh, in the evening time i have my basic photography workshop this work again this workshop again so if you feel you still have some questions uh, which you want to discuss you can you are very free 
if you if you can discuss in the Q&A session that will be great if you still think that there are some questions you need to discuss in detail you can uh, you are always welcome to join again in the next free photo in the basic photography workshop and we'll have some discussion in that time i have expert coming expedition so i usually divide my expeditions in bird streets and nature photography so my street photography expedition is on 6th march and uh, i have my nature photography expedition on 26th march on 20th march i have my birds photography expeditions all these are happening in the morning time so mostly i restrict my online workshops in the evening and uh, my outdoor workshops in morning time i have my special workshop uh, my light painting photography workshop is happening on 19th March. So this is the evening time, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. So this is really helpful workshop for those who want to learn the long exposures and want to create a creative photography using light sources. It can be steel wool, it can be other light strings or torches and all. So all these techniques we will cover. I'll demonstrate using different tools upcoming photography tour i have couple of tours uh, already scheduled on 18th feb i have this uh, birds photography tour for big one and for uh, 11th march i have my tour scheduled for bharatpur so these are advanced uh, we can say photography tours i have complete schedule it's uh, uh, three days two nights so i try to give the good quality of uh, we can say experience so what the best possible high level of experience i can give on this tour and we'll have different sessions safaris and all so mostly it's a very complete package someone who really want to get a complete hold of the camera device and want to study all those techniques for capturing birds photography it's really amazing my upcoming online workshops are on tomorrow i have my mastering photograph mastering lightroom module so lightroom module 2 is there tomorrow and on 12th feb i have mastering photoshop module 2 so it's a photoshop module 2 i have on 12th 12th feb on th on 13th i have glassware photography glassware photography actually i'm using just to help someone who's looking to uh, capture reflective material photos it can be glass it can be other reflective materials how we can control the reflection how we can have good light on the reflecting material what are the techniques and what approach we should have when we are working with the glass material or another other shiny things uh, when we are doing photography using even a studio work or when we have a good amount of lighting composition techniques as i said i am offering composition techniques modules so my module one is on 26th feb so all these online you, you can observe i have in the evening time uh, for a uh, bird photography uh... Yes. The camera lens, uh, which camera lens we need? Bird photography camera lens, I always advise to have at least 300 mm. So 70, 300 mm if you have. So it's a good starting point. Something around 400 mm we consider is a, we can say good uh, handhold or good quality of images you can get even if uh, the bird is at some distance. But for 300, so we need uh, extra prime lens huh? for uh, I have Nikon and the maximum is 140. Yeah, so it will be zoom in telephoto lens mm -hmm. 7300 mm. because the prime with that much focal length it will be very costly, it will really double the amount more than that. Mm -hmm. For uh, night photography, uh, what should be the ideal value for uh, shutter speed and APA? Yes, so when, when we were working, uh, talking about the aperture so and uh, shutter speeds, we also consider that uh, there is a factor about low light uh, photography. So we were mm -hmm. dealing with low light uh, conditions, when light condition is not good, when we mm -hmm. don't have optimal light condition, we have to work with some uh, values, some values which are allowing more lights. So something wide aperture like around 5.6 or below that depends on what, what kind of creativity you are trying to 
अचीव इन योर फ्रेम तो शटर स्पीड शुड बी लोअर अराउंड हंड्रेड और बिलो दैट यू कैन यूज ट्राई फोर्ड टू गेट अमेजिंग नाइट फोटोग्राफी and uh, in uh, means like birthday parties and all that uh, event uh, photography event photography uh, mostly event photography we are doing with good amount of lighting sources so we have some light sources we can use uh, uh, soft boxes lights so we can have uh, different flashes and all speed lights strobes so when we are doing all this kind of photography event one we have some some control on the light part so if you have control on the light parts uh, it's you who is deciding that what lens you are going to take like the 70 uh, 24 70 mm it's considered as a ideal uh, lens for the event photography mm-hmm. because it will give you liberty to go wider enough with the 24 mm and get uh, somewhere in the middle to go to good quality of medium frame with the 70 mm so this that, that that's why that lens considered as good uh, event photography lens 74 uh, 7 mm but uh, well, the main thing is we have control on the lighting part so we will be using uh, flash it can be on on camera it can be off camera flash so it means you are using some triggers and all and using some light light stands where you are mounting the lights with the soft boxes so all these things you need to understand how we can place the lights so when the light is coming from 45 degree angles how it create the shadows how it create the uh, feel of the image when light is coming directly from in front of you it will create different feeling so we'll call it as a flat light conditions when light directly coming in front of when light coming from the sideways around 45 degree angle we considered as really good in photography Do you have any is, uh, session There is one blog also on my site there is one blog on lighting you can read out that blog so it will help you understand how we can have the better lighting condition there is a one blog on three point shoot lighting condition mm-hmm. So what is three point shoot lighting condition and how how it affect the overall quality of your you know image it will really help you you can just read out that blog Do you have any workshop uh, on only portraits? Only portraits, uh, right now not. I'm just working with some studio. Creative with, means like a maternity kids like it. Yeah, actually for that I'm just working with some studio if I can get the opportunity because I need to work. Outside on... we can. I mean, uh, we can do, na? Yeah, that's it. Outside also. Outside also we can do. We can do in the studio environment also. Mm-hmm. For studio photography, right now I'm just working on the product photography and food photography. Other 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 topics I'm going to include, but uh, I'm just looking out for uh, some studios where they can offer me the models because uh, that is something I'm right now looking out. Some collaboration with the. Studio where they have some contacts of models. Okay. Any other questions? So whatever we have learned so far. No, as I'm a beginner, I don't have any queries. I learned a lot of things from as you. As a beginner. as a beginner we struggle on the technical aspect sometimes we we may want to learn more and more maybe sometimes which i said maybe you didn't understand uh if you understand that's really good if i was able to make you understand that's really good for me also mm-hmm. but if anything uh, anything you want more clarity any concept something like that you can you can, you can don't you don't need to hesitate you can ask i'm open to discuss any topic in my previous workshops i had good detailed discussion around exposure compensations 
one of the participant was very keen to understand that and it was quite a good discussion at the end Though the all things no, but while taking photo, it is always uh, confusing that what should be a value I, I will put or what should be the shutter speed, whether I should take yeah, it a mode or this mode. Yeah, as I as I said, simulator will really going to help because I found it really interesting and for beginner it's really uh, helpful. You can can uh, there are different photos also. It's not just the one single photo. There are different photos also. you can see the different photos and what camera settings it was having those photos in the same site there are some examples you can refer those so if even if you have your queries after uh, some time no problem you can send me your queries on my email id yeah sure i'll definitely get back to you and i'll try to help you as much as possible so you can have good control on your photograph yeah thank you i can whatsapp you too can i whatsapp if i any query you can you can easily send me mail because it will be helpful for me to get your get back to you on the email okay because i can't give you detail information on the whatsapp it's very difficult to share some information oh okay thank you most welcome shall i leave yes we can, we can conclude this session now thank you thank you and please submit your feedback please yeah uh, i'm always looking for the feedback because uh, i need to add this make this content more accomplish more uh, we can say the complete package for beginners so they'll know they'll feel more comfortable when complete this workshop so there should be no topic i should left uh, that's why i'm including more and more so if you think you can you need more information or some part which i should cover in this basic photography workshop i can include no problem yeah sure thank you bye bye bye